Officially, its name is the United States Penitentiary, Florence, Colorado. But inmates know it simply as Supermax. As in super maximum security. Easily the toughest prison ever built. The inmates' behavior is what drives their placement in here. By being violent, by being predatory, by being assaultive, by being escape prone, they are the ones that work their way into this facility. Due to open next month, Florence is the latest in a long line of tough federal prisons, beginning with Alcatraz in San Francisco Bay. It's the result of a $3 billion building spree by Congress for 47 new federal prisons. And Florence is designed to hold the toughest and most notorious inmates in the system. Candidates include some well-knowns, like Mafia Godfather John Gotti and super spy Aldrich Ames, and some not-so-well-knowns, like Tom Silverstein, linked to three murders while in prison. In short, people society has given up on. Our philosophy is that we don't rehabilitate individuals. We can only provide the opportunities for them to rehabilitate themselves. But those opportunities are few at this remote prison site where isolation is a way of life. Living spaces are concrete slabs from the bedding to the shelves. We avoid metal, uh, metal lockers and metal beds, for instance, because inmates would use those for weapons. We also have a built-in uh, cigarette lighter. Uh, we don't allow matches or lighters in this facility because inmates would use them to make weapons uh, or explosives. And unlike other federal prisons where inmates have at least some contact with others, at Florence, prisoners are never allowed to touch another human. Prison reformer Craig Haney calls it a living hell. Primarily they're looking to intimidate inmates and to punish them, punish them more severely than they've ever been punished by prison systems in the past. A notion suggests officials at Florence they couldn't agree with more. Jim Stewart, CBS News, Washington. Yeah, I know what that is.
There's someone out here walking around, but we'll show you. They have some cameras they can also monitor. So this is the sound of That's correct. The inmates are brought through the other side and then. They're on. You can see down there now. That's why uh, it doesn't have the light. Well, you just the light. See better? Did you? We got our butts kicked, huh? Oh, man. I'll be there on this Wednesday. I hope it gets a little better. <laughs> Sure. What we're looking at is a unit control center, and this is one of the things that really enhances the security and control over the inmates we have here. The officer inside this control center can electronically open and close any of the cell doors or any of the recreation. Just talk about it so we're identified on tape. But the, uh... These are just the uh, cable and power connections for the television. This is the inmate duress button that I talked about for medical emergencies. This is the inmate's light control that would turn the lights on and off. You can also dim them. And then this is the cigarette lighter. You would push this button and then the element inside this hole would heat up and stick your cigarette in there.
control center and butt and cut it off. He's got to come down here and key it off. But he, doesn't, he doesn't go actually in the cell. No. And uh, well, I should talk a little bit. I'll talk about the doors and I'll talk about use of restraints on these inmates. No, six to eight, not 60. We thought we'd just spend the whole day here. It's been done before. <laughs> I think five and a half hours is the record. Huh? CBS. They're all career people, including the warden. They're not political appointees. Where did she come from? You know, if you want generic shampoo and soap, they can also purchase shampoo. If they don't like that brand, another brand at the commissary. And then, they're gonna, and then close them all at the same time after they're done. You got it?
variety of reasons. One is this issue of shooting projectiles out into the range. The other is, I mentioned that smoke containment system, cuff from behind. I'm not going to reel it. Now, if it's in the middle, I've got that sort of one second or two second delay where I've got to let him go before the door. Cigarette butts. Somebody's throwing cigarette butts in the toilet. Uh, no, we do not have any cameras out here, no. Because there'll always be an officer out here. And uh, he probably will have with him at all times a... Uh You can open A101, too.
Can I have some things? There's a misconception that this facility is underground. It is not. Uh, the only piece of this facility that's underground is a small portion of this tunnel. And what it's doing is it's going underneath the fence line. That way we don't have a break in the perimeter fence and then we don't have a vulnerable uh, part that we have to secure or defend in another way. But other than that, the rest of the facility is completely above ground. One of the things, unfortunately, uh, the advantage to getting through before we're open is you get a lot more access than you would normally have. The disadvantage you're going to have is that there's not a lot of action going on. And it would take you a lot longer to get through. Did you draw duty today? No. Oh, we missed you. <laughs> well, I'll talk a little bit about it. Uh, this is the inmate visiting room, and the, the Bureau of Prisons has full contact visiting in every one of its facilities except for United States Penitentiary or Marion and here at the administrative maximum. Here we have total non-contact visiting. Uh, we have security glazing between the inmate and the visitor. There's no pass-through. There's no way that they can pass contrabands or weapons uh, from the visitor to the inmate. And their only way they can communicate is via a telephone, which we can monitor and tape record. And the, both the inmates and the visitors are aware that we will be, be doing that. You have to sort of, this seems like a fairly severe uh, visiting restriction, but you have to think about the types of inmates that we're going to house here. The individuals we're going to house here are the most violent, predatory, or escape-prone inmates we have in our system. What puts you into this facility is not so much the crimes you committed on the street, it's your behavior once you entered the prison system. So when you look at the population at United States Penitentiary in Marion, for example, less than 10% of the inmates came directly from the courts. Over 90% were already in our prison system and have not been able to function in an open population environment because they've been either very violent, assaultive, or escape prone. And so these types of precautions and the other precautions we'll see in terms of the cells and so forth are built to manage that very uh, demanding and violent population. How often are they allowed visitors? They're allowed visitors uh, up to five visits a month and each time they can have three visitors, and each visit can last up to seven hours. So their access to their family and relatives is, is fairly high. They also have uh, unlimited correspondence uh, between family and relatives and close associates, and then they have a limited number of phone calls they can also make each month. That's an interesting point you bring up, because one of the criticisms of this facility is that these individuals are placed in, I quote, isolation or solitary confinement. And we don't see it that way. These individuals get a lot of access in a variety of means, both with outsiders, their relatives, and so forth, and also with staff in this facility constantly. What do you say to the critics that say that the treatment here is dehumanizing because of the solitary confinement? Well, I would uh, argue with that on two points. First of all, we've tried to create 
a, a safe and also humane environment in this facility. We have extensive educational, recreational, religious programming, and then also allow a lot of contact between the inmates, both through correspondence, telephone, and the somewhat limiting visiting, so limited visiting with the outside world. Secondly, this program, or pieces of it, have been in place for over a decade at the United States Penitentiary in Marion. And the courts have consistently upheld both the constitutionality and legality of this program, and also the fact that it meets sound correctional practices. One of the other things you have to keep in mind is that we only house less than one half of one percent of the entire federal prison population in this facility. So the number we're dealing with in terms of this rather severe treatment is a very small number. And what puts the individual into this facility is their behavior. And what gets them out of this facility is their behavior. If they act in a nonviolent and a rehabilitative fashion, they will eventually work their way out of this facility and into a more open population. I'll show you they have a station over here. There's someone out here walking around, but we'll show you they have some cameras they can also monitor. So this is the side where the visitors are. This is where the that's correct. The inmates are brought through the other side in it. Have you worked at a maximum security prison? No, I worked at a medium, but not this high. Yeah. Is it exciting? Is it scary? It's a little of both. Yeah. It's, um, you know, believe it or not, it's sort of a high prestige place to be. We have a lot of people that want to work here because, I mean, if you're into corrections, I mean, this. There's not a maximum facility, there's a maximum unit of a facility that's in Mariana. Mm -hmm. Women are not as violent, so you know, there's not that, the numbers of them are not as high. Access to legal materials and to legal counsel uh, is very important to inmates and, and guaranteed by the Constitution. Uh, here we have two types of attorney-client visiting rooms. This is a non-contact attorney-client room. You see that the only contact is to uh, pass through legal papers between the attorney and, and the inmate. We also have full contact attorney-client rooms. They're, they're virtually identical except they have no security glazing up through here. And it's the attorney who makes the judgment whether he wants full contact or not full contact with his client. While I'm talking about legal access, let me also mention that we operate 19 basic law libraries in this institution. There are at least two in every unit. And then we operate a main law library. So if there's a volume that the inmate needs that's not on his unit, he can request it from our main law library and the materials would be delivered to him. So we try to have as much legal access for the inmates as we can. Explain the privileges of the inmate in terms of the getting to a library. Are they explain that if they are allowed or not allowed? Sure. All inmates are allowed to use uh, the basic law libraries that exist on each housing unit. And what they do is they would be released from their cells uh, when they need to be and placed inside that legal uh, library on a one to one basis. In other words, it would only be one inmate at a time inside that library. If they do not have a volume that they need from that library, they would fill out a written request for a volume from our main law library, and our staff would deliver it to the inmate's cell. And we'll show you the libraries a little bit. In the visiting room, and these officers can monitor any of the cameras we have in here. Uh, they can also look down and make direct contact with the attorney-client rooms. And these are the cameras you see here. These are in the attorney-client rooms. We are not permitted to have any audio monitoring of attorney-client uh, visits because there's constitutional guarantees about uh, attorney-client privileges. So we can only have a visual monitoring 
on the regular social visits, visits with their relatives or outsiders, we can both have audio and video monitoring of those visits. If we see anything suspicious going on in any of the visits, uh, the officer can tape record what's coming off of that camera so that we could use that as evidence in a potential legal action uh, based on a, a visiting violation. But you cannot do that with the attorneys? We can tape record the video only, not the audio. The, they're on. You can see down there now. That's why uh, it doesn't have the light that you would expect. See better? This is obviously the kitchen. And uh, most of the inmates here are fed through a satellite feeding system. They're either fed in their cells or in their units. And it's very similar to a hospital or nursing home uh, type setup. Each inmate would get two trays. Uh, one hot, one cold. Then they would be placed uh, in these carts. It has both a heated side that heats the food up to 180 degrees and an ambient side which keeps it cool. Then the trays are locked so they can't be tampered with and then they're driven out to each of the units. Then the officers deliver the meals downrange to the cells. All of our menus are approved by a registered dietitian and we can also provide religious and medical diets if we need to. There's a cold and hot tray. Cold so I might have my salad and drink in the cold and then meatloaf and mashed potatoes in the hot. Go out through the camera door. You go out to the back? I can let you out the back. Sorry. Okay. As soon as we shoot the dining hall, quick. We have the saying of the day on there, and they would also show the menu uh, would come by. Not the Dow Jones Industrial. No. Uh, we can open this if you want, but we can actually drive the bus into the institution when the inmates come in. So they don't have to be, uh, in typical institutions you drive up to the front door and you have to have a lot of weapons around and the inmates are escorted into the facility. Here we drive the bus into the facility, secure the bus, and then we can just bring the inmates in for processing. Could we see that? Sure. Can we open the... One of the unique features of this facility is we have a bus sally port where we can actually drive the inmate bus into the facility, secure the bus, 
and then process the inmates into the facility. In uh, most institutions, you have to bring the inmates through the front door with a variety of weapons, and it compromises in some ways the security of the institution. This is about as good as it gets in terms of uh, securing transportation for inmates. They would go right in here. That's just a pipe chase. Yeah, that's that's controls the commode that's inside that holding cell. Hey, Jay. How you feeling? Yeah, can you believe it? <laughs> With my two little kids. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Yeah, let's get your makeup man in here quick. You can open A101 too. Okay. Do a little talk here if you want. Can we get the. Yeah. Set it up here. Oh, okay, good. Can they put the range lights on? Can you see if you can get the range lights on? Well, I'll talk a little bit about that. Just stand over there. Okay. You're in the intermediate unit now, but it looks uh, architecturally the same as the pre-transfer and transitional units, what I call the three step-down units. These are the units where an inmate is now beginning to progress through the program here and work his way out of the facility. So you'll see the unit has a very different feel from it to it than the uh, general population unit. It's a much more open unit. Uh, the cells face each other. There are common showers at the end of each range. They do not have showers in their cells as the more secure inmates did. It's a single door cell. You don't have a vestibule or double door like you had in the other uh, units. The cells, though, are, are in some ways very similar. You see we still have the concrete furniture. Uh, though the individuals in the last unit, the pre-transfer unit, would actually get a metal locker. It's one of the privileges that they get. And these individuals would also be able to use uh, more of the recreation facilities we saw, the larger gym and the recreation yard. They are getting more privileges, they're getting less restrictions as they demonstrate through their behavior that they're able to operate in a more open population. How new is this program and who came up with this idea? Is this something new? Now this program has been around in some manner or form uh, since 1983 and it was developed at the United States Penitentiary in Marion. It was developed in response to a number of staff and inmate murders that took place here, and they added a much higher level of security and control in the facility than had previously existed. And they also began to develop this correctional program, this program whereby your behavior uh, will have consequences. Negative behavior means you'll have less restrictions, more control. Positive behavior means you'll be able to get uh, more privileges and work your way out into a more normal, open institution. So it has been tested. It has been tested and it has been proven to be extremely effective. When you say Marion. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I hit that once in the uh, visiting room. I don't hit it again in the interview.
I've lost most of it over the years. I don't think so. <laughs> conference room or we can do it outside whatever you prefer where, where are we going to have the prison uh, the corrections standing outside by the front entrance you know by the, the gold we've got the seal and all that stuff out there if you prefer that or in the conference room um, the window where I was sitting on that side of the table when you look back you can see the wire and all that the law library access uh, we have two libraries, the, the, le the law library, which I'll talk about in a minute, and then the leisure library. And the leisure library has educational materials, but also uh, typical pocketbooks that you would see in the New York Times bestseller list. Uh, the inmates can check out up to three at a time. Uh, they can hold the books for up to two weeks. And we also have a, a number of volumes that are completely in Spanish for that population. And as you can see, it's a wide variety of, of typical books that we have. I don't think so. Lecture. Mm -hmm. Are you saw? I couldn't understand. It's fine. It does look like a guy's movie. No, we purchased them, but we purchased some of them used. <laughs> You're in the main law library. We operate 19 basic law libraries throughout the facility, at least two in every unit. And then the main law library. If there's a volume that an inmate needs that is not in the basic library, they would fill out a written request for a volume in here, and it would be delivered to them, uh, generally within 24 hours. Books such as this create a big problem uh, for a correctional system, and that is inmates can use the volumes to try to send messages to each other, either by writing in code or symbols uh, or, or sticking things in the binder or cover of books. So every book that comes back into the library has to be searched by our staff page by page to make sure that the inmates are not using the volumes to try to have drug deals, to try to communicate with each other, uh, to try to plan escapes, etc. Uh, one of the unique features of this facility is it has its own courtroom built into it. Uh, because of the nature of the inmates that are housed here, we want to try to reduce the uh, risk to the community as much as possible. So we would ask the federal judges or magistrates to actually come into the institution and do hearings rather than transport these inmates out to the community to the courthouse. 
Of course, it's at the judge's discretion as to whether they will use the facility or not. outside or main control center of the facility and in here is where all the employees would draw their equipment and keys and behind that panel is where all our alarm system are, are uh, the fence alarms, fire alarm systems, uh, perimeter security systems that we have in place. The officers in here can also monitor more than 168 cameras that we have around this facility and can control many of the electronic doors that are inside this facility. We have over 1400 electronically controlled doors inside. How many officers are in here at a time? When we're activated, there'll be at least three officers in here at one time. And is this the door where all the prison officials will come in to? This is the door where all the staff will come in and out of. There's only two ways to get into this facility. The front sally port, that's the area we're in now, and then the rear gate. And that's where the inmates would come through on uh, buses or other transportation. Yeah, yeah, the inmates probably. This is the main gym. Uh, let me just tell you a little bit about this facility. We operate a stratified system of housing and privileges and restrictions. In other words, you start out in the most restrictive environment, and then as you prove that you're nonviolent and you participate in programs, you get less restrictions, more privileges. One of the privileges that the last few groups get before they are transferred out of this facility is the use of a recreation yard and a large gym such as this. Individuals in the most restrictive environments would not have access to this facility. One of the things that's unique about this facility is there's no weightlifting equipment, there's no pool tables, there's no ping pong tables, there's not the typical recreation equipment you find in a facility because these inmates would use that equipment to make weapons out of and to assault each other. So the only recreation equipment you'll find in this facility are balls and then these chin-up and dip stations which would be placed throughout the facility. These are all welded, one piece, and then they're bolted into the concrete so that they can't even take these apart to fashion weapons out of. How often are they allowed exercise privileges? It varies with uh, what unit you're in. If you're in the most restrictive unit, it's one hour a day by yourself, uh, seven days a week. In the next unit, it's up to 12 hours a week and you're able to recreate in small groups. And then as you move to the less secure units, you're allowed to recreate probably 20, 25 hours a week and in large groups. With the same equipment? Same. With the same equipment, that's correct. And yes, and we'll show you that. Okay. There's an outdoor yard which we'll show you. Be a star. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. The worst part is everything becomes conscious. Like, am I breathing? Am I standing? Like, yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> Those windows are up at the uh, staff corridor. I'll talk a little bit about that. We've got a corridor that runs above the corridor that we're on for staff only to power for an officer to look down and make sure that everybody's behaving. It, for the maximum, you said he'd be in here by himself one hour a day. He wouldn't be in here. Oh, he he'd be in his own little rec yard. We'll show you okay. those. Yeah. But this is for small groups. 
Yeah, this they they would have uh, probably twenty in here. There's a the concept being developed. Once we get into the unit, the recreation will fall in place. You'll, okay. It'll make sense to you. This just happens to be on the way. That's why we popped in. Sheet. Lose. Okay, great. That's got all that. How many is each and square footage and all that stuff. And if you get back and if you need a number or something that you don't have to take care of it. You want to have them open the, uh, yeah. I'll talk a little bit about. What explains the walk in and you can What makes uh, the administrative maximum unique? is not the you can just walk in. oh okay i'm sorry as i'm talking yeah, sure. okay i'll start all over again then. <laughs> uh, what makes the administrative maximum unique is its internal security not its perimeter security if you were to look at the external security of this facility it's really not that different from other high security facilities but inside the level of control is, and security is much greater than any other facility that the federal bureau of prisons operates and one of the ways we achieve that control is to have totally self-sufficient units, meaning that all the inmate services are built into the unit. Recreation yards, control centers, and then this is just another example. This is a uh, physician's examining room. In a typical prison, an inmate goes out to the hospital, the prison hospital, for sick call. Here, the medical staff will come into the unit and hold sick call here. That way we don't need to transport that inmate to our hospital and then back again. Obviously, if the inmate needs more care that we can provide here, or x-rays, for example, we'll take them out to the hospital. But as a matter of rule, we'll keep them here on the unit where we have the most control over him. Those are really the sort of the cornerstone of the medical care. It's not that different from an HMO or other or other things you have now. Uh, then we have a full-time dentist and a full-time farm. Then we would contract out specialists if we needed a radiologist. We have a contract with one or a cardiac care and would physician. They come here for that? Mm -hmm. Typically. And what if surgery? We would go to a local hospital. If it's a chronic issue that we can wait, we would transfer them to one of our medical facilities. We operate two. Uh, it seems particularly cold today. I don't know if they're, they have the doors open to the rec yards. I'm not sure. Did you play on Wednesday? At the game or whatever? Yeah. Did you? We got our butts kicked, huh? Oh, man. I'll be there on this Wednesday. I hope it gets a little better. <laughs> Sure. What we're looking at is a unit control center, and this is one of the things that really enhances the security and control over the inmates we have here. 
the officer inside this control center can electronically open and close any of the cell doors or any of the recreation doors inside the facility. He can also control all the lights and can also shut the water off to any of the ranges inside the facility. So it really is a level of control that's uh, not typical of most institutions. This control center also has a, an abort button in it. Uh, if the officer in there perceives that there's a threat to this control center, he can hit that abort button and all the control over the doors will go to the outside control center. That way if inmates did somehow get into this control center, they would not be able to open and close any other cell or other doors. Now we're in a general population unit, but the unit uh, is identical construction-wise. We're going to take you to the special housing unit too, which is you know one of the most secure units, and you'll see that it's it's almost like. This is a typical cell inside the administrative maximum, and I want to point out a few things to you. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is that every cell in this facility has natural light coming into it. Every cell has an outside window. The window, however, does not look on the external perimeter of the facility, nor does it look upon another inmate's cell. Uh, there's also a small window that goes into the range, so the inmate can see both outside and inside into the range. You'll see one of the most striking features is that all the furniture in this facility is made out of uh, poured concrete. The concrete is reinforced. And that's to reduce the opportunities for inmates to make weapons out of any of the furniture. Most prisons have uh, metal lockers, metal beds, and so forth. We don't have any of that here. We have a poured concrete bed with a small storage area underneath of it, a poured concrete uh, desk and stool. They're all immovable and then a poured concrete television stand. Every cell inside this facility has a 12 inch black and white television. And the inmate through that uh, not only gets commercial television, but that's where he receives most of his programming. We'll broadcast uh, educational programs such as government equivalency diploma courses, uh, religious programs and recreational programs, drug abuse counseling, uh, a variety of programs over the television set. That's his link to the programs. And then we'll complement that with staff coming up and down the ranges to make contact with the inmates. These inmates do not go to classroom settings. Uh, most of them do not go to congregate religious programs and so forth because of their assaultive nature. You'll see that the plumbing in this, instant, in this cell uh, is all one piece stainless steel. Uh, one nice feature in this facility is that every cell in the more secure units has its own shower. And that not only enhances inmates' privacy, but enhances our safety and security. That means that this inmate does not have to be escorted out to a common shower area several times a week. You'll see the commode is also one piece of stainless steel. There are no uh, controls uh, and knobs on any of the plumbing. Everything is very simple push-button operation uh, to reduce the amount of moving parts uh, that they could make weapons out of. The mirror is polished stainless steel bolted with security bolts. It is not glass as a typical mirror is. And then the inmate has several controls uh, that he can utilize. The inmate controls his own lighting. Uh, one of the criticisms of several institutions uh, throughout the country is that uh, correctional staff allegedly keep lights on inmates all the time. Here we let the inmate control his own lighting, whether he wants it on or off. Every cell also has its own cigarette lighter. The inmate pushes the button and sticks his cigarette in there. Uh, that's because we do not allow matches or lighters. Inmates could use those to make explosives out of. Every cell also has an inmate duress button. If the inmate has an uh, emergency, such as a medical emergency, he can push the duress button and an officer in this unit has to come down, make visual and audio contact with him, and then manually key that duress button off. If the officer does not respond within 90 seconds, an alarm will go off in the control center and a correctional supervisor will come down and find out what the issue is with that inmate. We also have uh, sophisticated uh, fire and smoke safety systems built in here. You'll see that every cell in this facility is sprinkled. 
uh, for fire safety. And then we also have an extensive smoke containment system so that uh, if the, an inmate has a fire or starts a fire in his cell, all the smoke will be kept inside of his cell and not endanger the life and safety of the inmates further up the range. Please talk about it so we're identified on tape. But the, uh... These are just the uh, cable and power connections for the television. This is the inmate duress button that I talked about for medical emergencies. This is the inmate's light control that would turn the lights on and off. You can also dim them. And then this is the cigarette lighter. You would push this button and then the element inside this hole would heat up and stick your cigarette in there. control center and, and butt and cut it off. He's got to come down here and key it off. But he doesn't, he doesn't go actually in the cell. No. And uh, well, I should talk a little bit. I'll talk about the doors and I'll talk about use of restraints on these inmates.
eight. Oh, 60. Not 60. <laughs> We thought we'd just spend the whole day here. It's been done before. <laughs> I think five and a half hours is the record. Who was that? CBS. They're all career people, including the warden. They're not political appointees. Or Where did she come from? The you know, if you will, generic shampoo and soap. They can also purchase shampoo, uh, if they don't like that brand, another brand at the commissary. You ready? Push it again. <laughs> sure, yeah, we have them on timers. Uh, it's, we control it. It would normally be longer than this, just for demonstration. <laughs> this facility in terms of most modern, toughest, most secure? Characterize it for me, please. Well, from a security standpoint, uh, it is the most secure facility in terms of internal controls, internal security over the inmates. In terms of the perimeter security, it's really not that different than a high security institution. We are very confident that the perimeter security is quite sufficient uh, to keep even the most escape prone inmates inside this facility. It is a very modern facility, and as you saw when you went through, uh, there's a large degree of electronic controls over doors. There's a lot of audio and video monitoring equipment. Whether it's the most modern facility in the nation, I don't know. It's definitely one of the most modern facilities in the Federal Bureau of Prisons. How about the toughest? Well, it's the toughest in the federal system from the extent that the inmates that are housed here are the most violent, the most assaultive, the most escape prone inmates that we have in our system. So in the federal system, this is the toughest institution. Who will be in this facility? Characterize for me the inmates. Well, who will be here is, is based more on their behavior once they've entered the prison system rather than their behavior on the street. Uh, in fact, when you look at the percentage of the population in currently housed in the United States Penitentiary in Marion, uh, you'll find that less than 10% of the inmates are direct court commitments. In other words, came off of the street into that facility. Over 90% are inmates that were already in the federal prison system and have proven that they are highly assaultive, highly predatory, or highly escape prone and unable to function in an open population. Let me give you some numbers to go along with that. When you look at the current profile of inmates at Marion, over 70% of them have been involved in multiple or serious assaults on inmate or staff. Over 43% have been involved in murder, either inside the federal prison system or in the community. And over 45% have either escaped from another institution or attempted escape. And obviously with those percentages, some of the individuals there have more than one of those characteristics. Describe an inmate's day-to-day -day life. Uh, here at the facility, what sort of restrictions he'll face compared to a normal prison? The restrictions an inmate will face in this facility vary depending on what part of the program he is in this institution. And this is a program. You start in a more restrictive environment and then you demonstrate through your behavior that you can assume more privileges, less restrictions. In the most restrictive unit, in the control unit, an inmate would be in their cell 23 hours a day, they would come out to recreate one hour a day by themselves. They would be fed all three meals in their cells. In the next step, in the general population unit, an inmate would be in their cells probably 20 to 22 hours a day. They would get to recreate uh, 
up to 12 hours a week in small groups, but they would be fed still in their cells. In the less secure units, the ones where you're working your way out of this facility, you would begin to eat in groups, whether in, in, inside the unit or in a dining hall, and you would get to recreate in large groups, in rec yards, and in gymnasiums. So as you prove through your behavior that you can function in a less restrictive environment, we'll move you into a less restrictive environment until you can prove that you can leave this institution and operate in a more open population. Why was there a need for this facility? Why is this different between Marion, between Alcatraz? Why was this specific facility needed? Well, Marion was never built to be a uh, maximum security facility. It was opened in 1963. It was built to operate as an open population, regular high security institution. And though it had very secure perimeter security, it did not have the internal controls that this institution has built into it. Uh, Marion has made modifications over the years, but it does not have the basic architecture that we have here, where every unit is self-sufficient and self-contained. Marion is also 30 years old, and as a result, uh, needs a fair amount of renovation. And in fact, when we begin to transfer the inmates out of Marion, we'll do over $15 million worth of renovation in Marion. How do you balance the need for strong security with the need for humane treatment of inmates? Well, we think we provide a good balance here between security and a humane environment. One of the things that we've seen over the years by operating a maximum security facility is that by congregating all the most assaultive, most violent inmates, we make the environment and all the other 75 facilities we operate more safe and more humane. In other words, we take, in essence, the bad eggs out of those other facilities and allow the inmates that are in those more open populations a greater degree of safety and security than they would normally have. But we think we provide here with a variety of religious, education, recreational programs, through contacts with visitors and contacts with staff, we provide an environment that balances both the security needs of these inmates and a level of safety and humanity also. Are you concerned with having so many of the worst of the inmates here under one roof? No, we're not concerned with that at all. Our experience has been that con congregating the most secure inmates, those that are the most violent, is a much better management tool than dispersing them throughout the system. It enhances the safety and security of all our facilities in addition to this one. Whichever you want. I'll just go like I sign my paycheck. Okay. You ready, Robert? No. Okay. okay, go ahead and give me okay, your name. My name is Edwin L. Houston. First name is spelled E-D-W-I-N. Last name is spelled H-U-G-H-S-T-O-N. And your position here? I'm a correctional supervisor or a lieutenant. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks, Lamar. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Um, from your perspective, is this facility really any different from the other correctional facilities? And if so, how so? Well, I can only speak from uh, my experiences. I worked at one other institution, and compared to that institution, this institution here has a lot more security features built into it. We have a uh, lot better control and supervision over the inmates that will be housed here. How's, how? Wh what will be different? Uh, the number of staff ratio, staff ratio to inmates, uh, the security procedures that are built into the institution, and uh, basically on the inmate side, we'll have different types of inmates here. How different than what you came from? Their, uh, their past history has included a lot more escapes, escape attempts, assault on staff, inmates, and, and uh, various other factors. Will you, as a, as a correctional officer, have more or less contact with the inmates here compared to what you were doing before? And how will the nature of that contact be different? I'll be having basically the same amount of contact with these inmates. My job requires that I get out and make rounds to the housing units, visit with the inmates, answer questions, take care of complaints. The only difference between this institution and the institution I came from is the my previous institution was a lot more open. Inmates were not you know, didn't have as many restrictions as they do here. Well, they have more restrictions because of the re of their records within the prison facilities. Yes. Does that concern you, and, and why, if so? No, it doesn't concern me because I believe we have the physical s buildings here to house these individuals, and we have some of the best staff that work in the Bureau of Prisons that to, to man the posts and to deal with these inmates. 
Okay. Why, why do you want to work here? Why do I want to work here? Mm -hmm. This is a challenge. This is the first type of institution of, that's been built in the Bureau of Prisons. And I think it is, uh, it, it's, it's important that we have good people here. And I consider myself to be one of those good people. And it's a, it's a challenge. And there's never been a place like this before. And it, I'm looking forward to it. I think John said earlier that, is that okay? Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, just to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to know what it is. But it's the firing range. Practice okay. range. Yeah. Um, John said earlier that this is, you know, this is kind of, it, with p positions like yours, this is like the cream of the crop. You know, this is a good position to have drawn and that you're excited about housing uh, some of the most, uh, the most criminal criminals. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? It's, it, it's a job. I think we have the facility and the staff here to deal with these type of individuals. It's uh, scary in the fact that, you know, I've never worked around inmates of this caliber. Some of the inmates that, are, that we'll be getting, I've worked with at other institutions that have progressed their way into this type of facility. They require more security, more supervision. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. What, if you have any fears, what are your fears? The newness of it. Not familiar with the, uh, you know, with the actual operation of the institution as far as Ba ba basically it just being a new experience never having done this before and the officers that we've got here have never have, have done this before and don't get me wrong and not, I, I'm not meaning to say that I don't believe these officers can do their jobs if they couldn't they wouldn't be here to begin with it's just the newness of it for all of us so is there a general feeling of concern about having so many of, of this type of an inmate under one or in one facility I don't believe so not amongst the staff that I've talked to. Why? Because I believe they see what we have here as far as the physical structure and the security procedures that we have in place. And I think they feel very comfortable and very good that if offer all operated properly, that we'll be able to house these inmates here with no problems. For the public, this is a, a pretty scary place because you know everyone's hearing that this is this is where the most hardened criminals will come. Are you fearful at all about working here? Why or why not? I, I'm, not I'm not fearful about working here. As long as uh, the staff that work here at this institution follow the procedures, follow the uh, policies that we have in place, this will be a very safe place for staff and inmates to work and do their time. And for the public? And definitely for the public. And kind of along the same line, but asked a little differently. It, 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 is this a safer place to work than other correctional facilities, and why? Yes, I believe it is a safer place to work because of the type of inmates here. We have a greater physical security measures in place that prevent assaults on staff and assaults on inmates. In that respect, I believe it is safer for inmates and staff. Okay. Good. That's it.
guess a little bit different. There are 12. And re really, there's the special operations response team, and then we have what we call two uh, disturbance control squads. And they're right there on site inside the institution and can be assembled in a matter of minutes in the event that we have an emergency. So, so they're pretty strict about uh, 